Hello, good morning, and welcome to today's daily devotional. Our Bible reading today is coming from the book of John, chapter 13. And it talks about Jesus washes the disciples' feet. So sometimes we tend to think that, um, you know, because we are leaders, we are not meant to obey the laws. Sometimes that happened back home in my country where you see leaders being the one disobeying the law, which is not supposed to be. Leaders are meant to lead by example. They are meant to set the pace for others to follow. So let's see what Jesus had to do. If Jesus could wash the feet of the disciples, then we who call ourselves leaders, including we, the parents at home, who are meant to be leaders to our children, we are meant to also obey certain rules. Like you want your children to clear the table after you eat, after you finish at the dining table, then you have to do the same. Like you finish eating, you go away from the table with your plate and you, you know, you clean those, um, those, your little, little crumbs that you have dropped right, dropped right there because children want to see you to obey. But in a situation whereby we are just forcing the rules and regulations on them and we are you know, shying away from those same those same rules, then that gives them the opportunity to ask questions. Like, mommy, you also left the table without taking your plate. So if that situation should happen, probably you did that by mistakes, then the next thing is for you to apologize. And that happens to daddies also. Daddies, when you're leaving the table, grab your plate, grab your spoon, clear your mess. It is just a natural thing. Everyone clear your mess and leave the table. So let's see what this chapter has to teach us. Jesus washes it, washes, ah! <laughs> Jesus washes the feet, the disciples' feet. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what is biting my mouth. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the father having loved his own having loved his i'm coming i need my pen having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end the devil had already put it into the heart of judas son of simon iscariot to betray him and during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash <laughs> And began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Can you can you just picture that exercise? Like, you know, he ran, he tied towel around him, bent down, and started, you know, washing their feet and using the towel to oh goodness. You know, that's the height of humility. Let's continue. Hmm wipe them with the towel that was tied around him he came to simon peter who said to him lord are you going to wash my feet hey jesus answered you do not know you do not know you do not know now what i am doing but later you will understand peter said to him you will never wash my feet can you wash my feet? Oh, Jesus, the Savior of the world, the, the Lord Almighty, the one that comes from God. How can you wash my feet? Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Hmm. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet alone, but also my hands and my head. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I mean, Jesus said to him, one who has bad who has bad does not need to wash excuse me except for the feet but is 
entirely clean and you are clean though not all of you for he knew who was to betray him hmm. for this reason he said not all of you are clean you know this issue of um judas let me divert a little bit the fact that he was able to betray jesus should have told us that even though some people they work with the geo they drink from the same cup they eat with the geo I don't want to say all Jews. I'm talking of those who are truly servants of God. The fact that people serve with them, they dine with them, doesn't actually mean they are going to be faithful to them or they're going to be, you know, true children of God. The fact that somebody is a, is a pastor or is, is acting like the true prophet doesn't mean they are actually true. Only God knows the true christians those who are christ christ like who are actually serving him wholeheartedly without any bias without any any you know some people judas is judas's case is so like it has explained to us even when a friend betrays you do not be surprised when your own sibling your own blood messes up do not be surprised when you see a parent a mother for that matter who belongs to an evil society and is donating the blood of his of her own children or you see a father killing you know i don't want to use that word if father taking his own children's life or donating his own children for rituals those are the examples the fact that they are your blood does not mean they cannot mess up just like Judas, who was eating and dining with Jesus, knows Jesus in and out, knows that he's a child of God, knows everything, and yet still went ahead and betrayed. So if Judas could betray Jesus, who are you? Who are you not to be betrayed? Who am I not to be betrayed by anybody? Anybody can mess up. So let's just take them as another Judas. So we are rounding up verse 12. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for this is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. That is setting a good example. For I have set you an example. Did the scripture hear what I said? <laughs> I never knew that was the next statement. That you also should do as I have done to you. Hmm. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master. Nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know, if you know these things, you are blessed if you do them i am not speaking of all of you i know whom i have chosen hey i'm sure judas knows what jesus was talking about but it is to fulfill the scripture the one who ate my bread listen to this part has lifted his heel against me i am going to i'm going to note that part I am going to note that part down. Hmm. That is uh, verse 18. Verse 18 said, I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But it is to fulfill the scripture. Now listen, if you are a betrayer to anyone, then you are not a chosen one. Because it is not that Jesus did not actually choose um, Judas from the beginning of course he was part of the 12 disciples but he decided to betray so ever since that thought had started he had been unchosen he had been deselected so you may be a chosen one by being a Christian by Christ you know dying for your sin but that does not mean you're going to remain in that blessing or you're going to remain in that salvation it all depends on your choice. What did you choose? What's your choice? Because our choices in life will determine what is going to happen to us. Or whether we will fall out of grace or we remain in grace. Hmm. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. 
He said, the one who hates my bread has lifted his heel against me. As in, is that place not too, too touching? I tell you this now. Before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you. Whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives who sent who has sent me. Receives him who sent me. Now this is the last. Um, oh my God. Okay, no, this is not the last headline. Then the second headline. The second headline says Jesus foretells his betrayer. That's verse twenty-one. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, "Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me." Mm. Imagine this is from verse twenty-one. One of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each, look at one another, or certain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter, therefore mentioned to him to ask of Jesus, to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. I need you to say something about this particular verse. After he had received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew what he was what he said this hold on now no one at the table knew why he said this to him some some thought that because judas had the common pause jesus was telling him but okay jesus was telling him buy what we need for the festival or that he should give something to the poor so after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. I want to say those place again. Do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew what he said to him. Some thought that because Jesus had had the common pause, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need to, buy what we need for the festival or that he should give something to the poor. So, after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. The new commandment. So, that is how that headline ended. So, now let's move to another headline. The new commandment, verse 31. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man had been glorified and God had been glorified in him. If God had been glorified in him, God will also glorify himself and we glorify him at once. Little children, I am I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me as I as I said to the Jews. So now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone, we know that you are my disciples if you have loved one another. So that is the end of that headline. Then another headline says, Jesus foretells Peter's denial. Verse 36, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. <laughs> you know, sometimes I see Peter like I see myself. <laughs> it's not really good to overpromise sometimes. Just, it's better to be quiet than to overpromise because you may not meet up 
Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the, cro the cock crows, you will, have, you will have denied me three times. Okay, that's the end of that headline. The rest continue on chapter 14, which you can read on your own. So seriously, when you say, ah, I love you and I can die for you, be careful. Especially those boyfriend thing, boyfriend and girlfriend thing, when you have to go extra mile talking out of the moon. Oh, I will marry you. If I don't marry you, I should die. Oh, I will marry you. The heaven should fall if I don't marry you. Oh, you will be my queen. Be careful. Because it might just be for that moment because you want to have sex with that person. And then you have to make those promises. And this person is keeping your promises. It's more like a covenant. So be careful what you say. And like I said, sometimes I will promise too. So I'm learning. So Jesus was like, oh, you can die for me. But you're going to deny me very soon. So Peter is overzealous. <laughs> Thank you for joining me and I'm going to see you again tomorrow. I love you. If you enjoy any part of this or if there's anything that ministers, please share with me. I have a lot of interesting verses that I've learned from and I love the fact that I always point it out. Anything I learn and I know you're learning too. So God bless you and I love you so much. Bye people. Ciao, ciao. Watch out for a new logo on the Glorious Generations family. It's ready, but I'm not posting it yet. I'm keeping you in suspense. <laughs> ciao, ciao.